suffering of my soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Fire fall. going to open up the precious Word of God right now. We'll, we'll take up an offering probably at the end and um, it'll be a love offering for the Ignite Ministries. So those are the guys that help with putting up all the tent and all the, everything that's, that's happening here. We've got Yes, I, I love the Fawcett family here from Worship Him Ministries. And I'm from a church over in Wilsonton. I'm the pastor. My wife and I are pastor at church in Wilsonton over here for Breakthrough Center. And we also have an evangelist who will be joining us a bit later. Um, Yana Paul's from the River Church. So I just love how in these so many different ministries just beginning to work together. Just beginning to work together in one accord for the sake of the kingdom of God. To bring in the harvest, you know. To, um, if we could have this, um, side window closed, that would be, that would be awesome. There is, there is a nice breeze, but I would prefer that it was closed. That would be great. If you want to open your Bibles, go to Ephesians 3. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Oh yeah. Awesome. Ephesians 3 verse 7. Or I'll start from verse 6. It says, And this is God's plan. Both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children, both are part of the same body. Both enjoy the promise of blessings because they belong to Christ Jesus. By God's grace and mighty power, I have been given the privilege of serving him by spreading this good news. Though I am least deserving of all God's people, he graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures, or New King James says, unsearchable riches available to them in Christ. You know, I just want to speak along that kind of thing about the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches of Christ. And we'll get into, I'll just start, I'll see how far I get along in Mark, the book of Mark. Chapter 5, verse 4, well, chapter 4 later, but the unsearchable riches of Christ. I just want to give you the following illustration that I told my children just recently because it's it's fresh on my heart and I think it's a powerful illustration. Jesus, who knows, Jesus told many parables, you know, he told parables and this this is a parable regarding the unsearchable riches of Christ. And it goes something along this. I tell it differently every time. So. <laughs> but there was there was a man who loved art, and he had a son who shared with him his his father's love for fine art. They were extremely wealthy. They lived in England, and it was around the time before it must have been 1930, 1935 or something. Before the World War broke out, they began collecting the finest artwork the world had ever known. Um, they, they had a private collection. Money was no issue to them. They lived in a very opulent place. 
a palace. And they put in the halls Monet's, Picasso's, Rembrandt, all of the great works of art in the halls. And war broke out and the son was conscripted to go to war. He was forced to, to go to war. And so he went to war and he's speaking to someone who was with him who was a soldier in the same barracks as him and he said well I actually I love art as well and I'm an aspiring artist but I'm not very good <laughs> I'm getting better but I'm doing my best you know and anyway they went into the battlefield one day and this aspiring artist actually was wounded in battle and the son who loved art just picked him up on his shoulder and began to drag him out of battle and, and rescued him. But in the process of rescuing him, he was shot and killed. He died saving his friend. And so the father in the mansion with all this art got the news that his son had been killed in, in battle. And um, it was his only son. And he was walking the halls, looking at all of the art and just thinking, you know, this is not cool. This is not good at all. He had no one to share it with. And over the course of time, this soldier who had his life saved by the son, he painted a picture of his son in, in uniform saving his life and took it over to the father on Christmas Day, just presented him with this gift just to thank his father for his son. And the father was so moved by, by it because that picture represented his son so well. It was uncanny in the resemblance. Though it would never be one of the great pictures, one of the great paintings that earth, you know, artists would critique it and say, it's not right here, it's not right there. The father loved it because of the meaning that it represented his son. So he hung it up right in the prized place above the fireplace. Right above the fireplace there. He shifted aside the million dollar artwork pieces and put it right above the fireplace. And that year, the father passed away. Probably heartbroken. Who knows? It's a parable, so don't get too, don't get too upset. You know. <laughs> but he actually, the art world was very excited when they heard this because they realised, you know, all of these precious works of art are going to be up for auction soon. Um, we're going to have access to these these bits that have been, you know, hidden in this private collection. So, and he scheduled the auction to be on Christmas Day and people flew in in their private jets and the place was a buzz and the auction started and the auctioneer said, basically, you know, okay, so all of the big wigs were there in suits and they came in limousines, were, you know, had multi-million dollar estates themselves. They were all going to fight over the best ones and all, all this precious art. And then the, the house as well was up for auction because he didn't have anyone to leave it to. He only had a son and then after he died, that was it. So they began auctioning. The auction opened, but the auctioneer brought out first the picture of the man's son and said... This is the first piece of art. It was painted by this person. And everyone's like, who's that? Never heard of him before. And they said, you know, who, who, will, take, who will take the sun for, you know, $1,000, no one. 500 no one. 400 no one. 300 200 And then there was a neighbor of the man snuck into the back of the room feeling really out of place, but he knew, he knew his neighbor and, and loved his neighbor and had time for him. And so he, he said, $200 is all I can afford. I'll, I'll take the sun for $200. Purchased it. And um, the auctioneer said, ladies, and the art people are like getting annoyed. They're impatient. They're like, come on, move it on. We, we don't want that. We want, we want all the other stuff. Get to the good stuff. You know? And um, the auctioneer said, ladies and gentlemen, the auction is over. According to the express will of the Father, he who takes the Son gets it all. I want to speak to you about the unsearchable riches of Christ. When you get Jesus, you get everything that this world wants. All of the things that the world is 
fighting to get. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. It says in Romans that if he withheld not even his own son, how will he not graciously with him give us all things? All things come with the son. So many times we think, okay, I'm saved, but you know, okay, what else do I have? Uh, I've got to just like barely getting by or, you know, we go drag ourselves into heaven. The Bible says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Let's look at Mark 4, Mark 4, chapter 35. Four things that we have dominion over as believers. Four things that we have dominion over by way of inheritance. It says, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up, high waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him, up shouting, Teacher, don't you care? We're going to drown. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Thank you, Lord. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. The first thing is dominion. Dominion over natural things. Jesus said, we're going over to the other side. But the natural circumstances, the weather, thank you, said, uh -uh. <laughs> no, you're not. The storm that rose up was fierce. Who's had experiences where a storm's rose, risen up by way of opposition against you that seems insurmountable? But Jesus said, if Jesus said that you can go over to the other side, then no storm can stop you. Jesus had dominion and he wanted his disciples actually to learn how to exercise that dominion over natural things. That's why he said, that's why he rebuked, he said, he woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. I have it on good authority. It's the harshest Aramaic, shut up, that you can. Jesus would never say it. Yeah, he would. Shut up. Just like that. A rude, you know, confrontational rebuke to the wind and waves. And it obeyed him. It obeyed him and they marveled. And then he said, he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Fear is an enemy. Fear is a stinking enemy. Dominion over fear is part of your inheritance. The Bible says that God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Let's go there. It says that this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. And don't be ashamed of me either. I like that. Because many times the circumstances come against you when you step out to go and begin to share Jesus with people. When you begin to go, you know what? I'm going to go full on for God. I'm going to go to Bible college. I'm going to step into His will for my life to a new level. Then it's like all the winds and the waves say, no, you're not. All of the um, relatives, whoever it is, trying to dissuade you, persuade you not to go, convince you not to go. They'll just, I'll tell you what, when... When I made up my mind to go to Bible college, someone offered to fly me over to California 
and stay in their place because they had all this real estate and everything. They needed some people to watch over it, to not have it be unoccupied. As a backpacker, that was pretty appealing. But I knew in my heart, I cannot do this. Like, it's wrong. I just, God's just made himself so real to me and I'm, my life is not going in that direction anymore. Circumstance. We're meant to have dominion over those things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Dominion over fear. Dominion over fear. If you keep reading... Mark 5, it says, So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of Gennesaret, or I've got NLT, Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with chains. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, he offered. As he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to him and bowed low before him. With a shriek he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son? Jesus, Son of the Most High God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the Spirit, come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, what is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion, because there are many of us inside the man. The evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send us into the pigs, the spirits begged. Let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs. And the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. Dominion over all of the power of the devil. Dominion over the, the realm of the demonic, dominion over every contrary spirit, dominion over the spirit of fear. You know, we've, we've still got the same things going on today. People cutting themselves. It's a spiritual thing. People cutting themselves, trying to get, it's demonic. And it can only be truly dealt with by the spirit being cast out. There's a lot of band-aid solutions and there's some psychology, but we've got some great psychology in renewing your mind according to the Word of God. Amen. Giving your life to Jesus Christ, coming and being completely set free and having dominion over every spirit that would try to bring you down. Every spirit that would want to kill you, there is dominion over that by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is a good thing. You know, the devil is not over your head. He's under your feet. He is not, you know, many times, uh, sometimes people, the way they talk about him, it's like they're getting beat up by him. There's, he's so powerful and we're so weak. No, it's not, not actually like that at all. Jesus completely had dominion. He stripped the devil of all his authority and gave that dominion to the church to walk in his authority. He made a public spectacle of the devil triumphing him, triumphing over him by his victory on the cross. He has already been dealt with. Far too many times we did give the devil far too much credit when really the glory belongs to God and we can walk in the dominion for which Christ provided for us. If you believe it, say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Dominion over all the forces of darkness. Dominion over the spirits that would drive people even, and, and look, I'm, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. I'm angry. Because I heard someone, someone took their own life even in this park a few months ago before we set up. Let me tell you, that is why we're here. Amen. That kind of thing is not going to keep happening. That kind of thing happens more and more the more the church sleeps. But I see a group of people that are waking up 
to who they are in Christ, waking up to the dominion that God made available for them to walk in. A group of people that are carrying the fire of God, preaching the gospel to every living creature and seeing people rescued out of hell and brought into heaven. If you're with me, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell you what. Wicked devil. He is not allowed to continue to have his way in Wilsonton. Just came to announce that. That's why we set up the tent. Just that a public announcement, number one. The, the devil is not allowed to have his will here in Wilsonton in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He has a will for your life. God has a will for your life. God has a good plan for your life. A plan to prosper you. Plan to bless you. Plan to give you a future and a hope. Not a plan to harm you. Plan to cause you to walk in the dominion that he paid such a high price to be able to have. Don't sell sell it short. Don't sell his death short. Don't trample the blood of Jesus underfoot. Treating the blood of Jesus as a common thing. It's not a common thing. He paid such a high price for us to have this. And I, for one, want to make full worth of it and want to be in with a group of believers that are going to make full use of their inheritance, full use of the unsearchable riches that we have in Christ. We're going to, we're going to sell those paintings. We're going to sell those Rembrandts. We're going to sell those Picassos. And we're going to use that money to preach the gospel. We're going to live in the mansions. And we're going to bring people in. We're going to feed them. We're going to clothe them. We're feeding them this afternoon. We believe in prosperity. We believe in prosperity because God is prosperous. His will for you, He loves you. He loves you. Poverty is of the devil. God's will is that you be blessed. Ephesians says that you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ. Every spiritual blessing. You know, that includes the blessing of Abraham, which causes you to be not just rich, very rich. That's good. That's good news. Sounds like the good. It sounds like good news to the poor, actually. Doesn't it? If, If you don't have to stay poor, what's good news to someone that's poor? You don't have to stay poor. You can come out of it. And he can, he can, though you might have been in the dunghill of life, he can set you and make you like a prince. Yes. You know, there are uh, people that have started at the bottom that God has raised and put them in a high place. Right. And I'm believing that there are people sitting here tonight that you, though you might have started at the bottom, there is an anointing coming upon you. And by the power of the Holy Ghost and the shed blood of Jesus, He is going to cause you to be above and not beneath, the head and not the tail, and give you dominion over natural things, over prosperity, that you're going to use that blessing to extend the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about the love of money. We already said, seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things, yeah, they'll be added to you and we'll use them. We'll use them. We will use them. Oh, yes. We will use them. Dominion over all of the power of the devil. Mark 5 verse 21. Jesus got into the boat again. <laughs> Something's good. Something good is going to happen when Jesus gets into the boat again. I want to keep reading. Come on. Jesus has got into the boat again. And went back to the other side of the lake where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Jesus went with him and all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal with, from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them. See, the devil didn't just want to bleed out this woman through sickness and disease. He wanted to bleed her out financially as well. 
I've come to tell you, he will not, the devil, he does not have permission to bleed you out financially either. You will not bleed out. You will not bleed out physically or financially. But she had got, gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus. She had heard about Jesus. She had heard. Somebody, come on. Amen. She had heard about Jesus. Amen. You know what? We use this soul winning script. And the first line has, has anyone told you God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? You know, many people have not heard about Jesus. Yeah. We're growing up in a different time now. I know that the older generation kind of think, yeah, everyone's heard about that. A lot of people go into state schools that are younger. You know, Wilsonton State High, Harristown State High. There's no religious education. You can't opt in. There's no high school religious education in schools in Toowoomba that I know of. And if you know of one, let me in. I will go in. I will preach Christ. And then I will have people will get saved, healed, delivered, set free. And then we will see where things go from there. We will have a revival all right. Because I, I'm... I, I'm not trying to burn bridges, but I believe this word, and I'm no longer going to compromise the message of the gospel. I am just going to let it out, let it rip, and just let the chips fall where they may, because people need to hear. How can they hear unless someone preaches to them? How shall they know unless someone tells them? Many people, when we say, has anyone ever told you God loves you and he's got a great plan for your life? They say, no. No. You can quote John 3.16. People have not heard it. People don't know. You, people that are in church are like, John 3.16. <laughs> they scoff. Almost. I was speaking to... Oh, this is live stream. I'm not sure if I should say that. <laughs> Religious people from churches the, they get upset about when you sometimes when you go and speak the gospel I'm like what on earth is going on am I living in an alternate reality they should be saying well done let's go come on how many people have you led to Christ today it's bizarre <laughs> she heard about Jesus Amen. praise the Lord you're going to hear about Jesus tonight. Amen. You're hearing about Jesus, the many things that he that he did. You know, he did so much when he was on the earth that books could not contain all of the miracles that he did, all of the healings, all of the incredible events. The, the books in the whole world couldn't contain them. But we're reading about him tonight. Hallelujah. She had, she had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Or she said within herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out for him, so he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, Look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over or be made whole as well I tell you what this woman this woman had to push through fear this woman had to push through fear we, we love having children in the tent hey don't worry hey it's not even a church you know so it's it's a tent this is why there's a different dynamic to this meeting can i just say god bless them let the children come hallelujah I tell you what this this, um, who touched me? This woman pressed through potential fear because according to the law, 
She was she was bleeding. She wasn't meant to be out in public. They could have she could have had serious consequences, potentially stoning. But she thought, I am going to press through this because she had heard about Jesus. I'm going to push through this fear because she had heard about Jesus. How many of us, now that we have heard, now that we've tasted the goodness of God, are prepared to just push through any fears and to begin to walk in dominion over fear? Fear tries to back you down like a giant, Goliath. You know how many giants killed people in the Old Testament? In the whole Bible, how many giants do you think took out God's people? Runs with hero. Zero. Zero. They had... They took no one out. It was just through intimidation, fear. Goliath was big. That was it. That was it. He was just big. No, I deliberately... <laughs> today. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> approached some people. <laughs> that looked like they would overpower me physically. I have to say, when, you know, <laughs> quite easily and, and thought, I wonder how this will go. But I tell you what, they, they weren't so bad because many times it's just the fear that is holding you back. Yeah. Yeah. And so just press through it. Press yeah. through it because you've heard. Press through it because they need to hear. Yes. Just press through it and begin to exercise by faith your dominion over it. And as you go, it'll leave. As you go, you'll just discover you'll get bigger on the inside. You start backing away from, oh, whoa, well, that was a little bit scary. And then you back away. Hey, we opened, we opened that room one day and there was a spider in the cupboard. So I didn't open that cupboard anymore because it scared me. Yeah. So we don't open that cupboard. Okay, everybody. Oh, yeah, I won't open. And then you go in the room and the spider's on the ground. Okay, we're just shutting the door now. And then we don't go in that room anymore. And then pretty soon you're in a mental asylum in a padded cell because you don't go outside. You're afraid of everything. You're afraid of eating, breathing. It's not like I wish it was hyperbole. I honestly do. I wish I, I was over exaggerating things. But we have people that are just completely bound up by a spirit of fear. And I tell you... <laughs> That's going by the grace of God and in Jesus' name. That spirit of fear is being broken off people's lives tonight. Both now and forever. We're going to run. We're going to run free. We are going to proclaim Jesus. I mean, Goliath just wants to back you down. He just wants to stop you from speaking about Jesus. He just wants you to stop. No one even gets beaten with rods in Australia like they did in the book of Acts and they still wouldn't stop. Tell you what, we're not going to stop. Count the cost now and just make a decision tonight. We're not going to stop. He is worth it. He is worth just continuing. He paid such a high price. Dominion over sickness and disease. Jesus had dominion over sickness and disease. She said within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And she went and almost like stole the miracle from Jesus. Just went and just went, I believe it, went out, grabbed a hold of it by faith. You can pull on the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You actually don't always need someone to lay hands on you. You can choose, uh, I'm going to receive it tonight. I am going to receive tonight. I'm going to pull on, on him. I'm going to pull on the anointing. Dominion over sickness and disease. We keep reading. Right after that, while he was still speaking to her, messages arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Only believe or just have faith in the NLT. Then Jesus stopped the crowd and wouldn't let anyone go in, go with him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. 
He went inside and asked, why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead, she's only asleep. I love Jesus. <laughs> she isn't dead, she's only asleep. Yeah. Can't you imagine people trying to correct Jesus? Um, excuse me. Um, there's no pulse. There's no breathing happening. There's several indicators that are contrary to the fact that you said, you know, maybe doctors say certain things. Well, actually, in my expert medical atheist opinion, looking only at the seen realm, they don't say that, but yeah. I'm interjecting. Yes. Because we know the one who yes. flung the stars into their place, the God of heaven and earth who can change circumstances. Hallelujah. Amen. While this commotion and weeping, the child isn't dead, she is only asleep. The crowd laughed at him, but he made them all leave. He took the girl's father and mother and his three disciples into the room where the girl was lying, holding her hand. He said to her, Talitha Kum, which means little girl, get up. And the girl who was 12 years old immediately stood up and walked around. They were overwhelmed and totally amazed. And Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone what had happened. And then he told them to give her something to eat. Jesus, this is the fourth thing. Jesus has dominion even over death. Dominion even over death. It says in John, Jesus said about himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said later, I am the resurrection and the life. You know, when my father was in hospital, I had a sense that he was coming to the end of his life. I did. I had a sense in my heart, in my spirit, that he didn't have that long left. And, you know, I was... Driving up there, the nurses called me and said, you know, he's probably not got that long. And I started to read the word to him. And I started to read in John, I was choosing specific passages to read because I was choosing the ones that I knew that he loved, the ones that he had read to me. And I was reading in John 6, and basically in John 6, Jesus is preaching, and he's preaching the crowd away. People, people start going because Jesus is saying things that they don't want to hear. You know, he'll say things to you that you don't want to hear because he loves you. Correction is not rejection. He loves you. He wants you to grow. He wants you to come up to where you need to, where you should be, who he's created you to be. He was saying, you know, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you're not going to be my disciples. They're like, okay. The crowd started dissipating. I'm not into cannibalism. This is a bit too far. This is not, you know, this is over the line. And so people started to leave. And then he looked at his disciples and instead of saying, oh, guys, come on, please, please, can you stay with me? No, he wasn't insecure. He looked at them and said, are you going to leave me too? Are you going to leave me too? The door was open for them to, he's just like, are you going to leave me too? And one of the great things that they said, and I was reading this to my father when he was in hospital. I said, as I read, to whom shall I go? They answered and said, to whom shall I go? You have the words of everlasting life. And that was the moment my father breathed out his last breath. And I tell you what, the assurance that that gives, that we know where he is. I don't know if I, according to psychologists, I probably haven't properly mourned the death of my father to this day. Because I was so happy in the hospital room. There was peace. I was smiling. I kept reading the Bible for a bit longer. I just stayed in there. The nurses came around. Two of them. I said, is everything okay? I said, everything's great. And then one of them was like looking at the different things going, um, uh, and, but the one behind her was just smiling and nodding. 
And, and then she was like, well, why didn't you press the button? Why didn't you, you know, those like, if anything happens, you know, if this, 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 you know, just press the button if you need us. We're just down the hall. Don't worry, don't worry. Fear, fear, fear. <laughs> no, I don't have a spirit of fear. God has given me a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And at some point in time, you will leave this earth. It is once appointed for man to die, and after that, the judgment. And he, otherwise, the rapture will happen, and then the worst seven years of world history. And so you need to be ready to meet Jesus, whether it be the rapture, whether it be your personal rapture when your spirit leaves your body and you die. I'll tell you what, you want to get out before the, those seven years because chances are you won't make it through that. My dad breathed out his last breath at that moment when I read, To whom shall I go? You have the words of eternal life. I want to ask you a very important question. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Maybe you're here, you don't, you've never publicly acknowledged Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God loves you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. To as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. You can have this life. You can have an assurance that you will be with him when you go. You could not live in fear. You can live with an assurance. If you have never publicly acknowledged Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then I'm going to want you to do that. Second category of people is that maybe you have acknowledged him before, but if you're honest, you say, well, I'm... I don't know, I'm not on fire for God. I'm not red hot. If it was a scale of 1 to 10, I'm probably around a 5, 6. Friends, that's lukewarm. And Jesus said, I will spew you out of my mouth. He likes his coffee either hot or cold, not lukewarm. You cannot be lukewarm. This is not the time to be lukewarm in Christianity. Your soul is at stake. Your eternity is at stake. And there are many people that need to come into the kingdom of God. The Lord wants to use you. Come back to Him. I don't know what happened. Whether it was something hidden, jealousy, lust, greed has come into your heart and caused you to be to fall away from Him. Well, today in this tent is when you come back. Maybe it was an outward thing, bankruptcy. Jealousy, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will keep you out of heaven. Whatever it is. Today's your day to be on fire. And the third category of people is maybe the devil's always lying to you, to you telling you you're not saved. You don't have an assurance of salvation. Well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed here in this tent. If you fit into any one of those three categories, we want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. Any one of those three categories, those people, I want you to lift your hand right now, wave it at me, show me that that's you. Yep, I see you over here. I see you at the back over there. I see you over here. Is there anyone else in one of these categories? We want to pray with you tonight. That's awesome. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. I want you to look up at me. Those that raise their hands, I want you to stand right now. Stand to your feet. Stand right now, those that raise their hands, that's it. And then I just want you to come, come up to the front here. We're going to pray with you. Hallelujah. There's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents than 99 just ones that don't need to. And we don't know exactly what category you fit into. That's between you and the Lord. But we deliver the message. Awesome. Man. Well done, champion. Well done. It's the best thing you could ever do. Give your life to the Lord. Give your life to Jesus Christ. I want you to pray this. Pray with me. Mean it from your heart. I want you to say this with your lips out loud. Mean it from your heart. God takes you at your word. He's not like 
Just people that are frivolous. You want to come? Not like people that are frivolous. That he, he will take you at your word. If you mean business with him, he'll mean business with you. So I want you to say this prayer after me. Say this from your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Thank you for dying for me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I thank you that from this day, I will never be the same. Heaven is my home. And I'm going there. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Awesome. So let me pray with you right now. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. It's, it's just a sign of surrender. You know, like some, when someone points a gun at you and says, you know, stick them up. It's just a sign of surrendering to God. To say, I'm not, I, I want you. I want you, Lord. Father, I thank you for each one here today that said yes to you. I thank you that from this day they will not be the same. I thank you for an eternal assurance in their heart that they will never be the same from this moment in Jesus' name. Thank you for your precious anointing that's breaking every yoke over their lives. Receive that Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. An assurance of salvation in Jesus' name. <laughs> Take it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Pray for you, my friend. Father, thank you. Lord Jesus. Yokes be broken, assurance come. Yokes be broken, assurance come. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I tell you what, I was speaking about the spirit of fear a lot. I tell you, if you, if you have, if that's been a thing, for you, <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you have battled that, if you're here and you've been cutting yourself, it's demonic. It is not God's will for your life to cut yourself. You are, you're made in the image of God. You're a child of God. You're, you're made in His image. He loves you. He's got a good plan for your life. That thing ends today. That thing ends today. Lift your hands to the Lord. Every yoke of bondage. There it is. There it is. Just drink it in. Just take it. Receive that into you right now. He's touching you. He's touching you. He's
he's touching you. It doesn't matter whether you fall or not. Just it's a distraction. Just let him touch you. If you fall, there's someone behind you. It doesn't matter. I don't care whether you fall, whether you levitate up into the sky. I just want the Lord to touch you in Jesus' name. And that you be free from that thing. Yeah? Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, yokes of bondage are broken here today. Through your blood that was shed. <laughs> you can laugh. You can laugh if that's what's in you. Let it out. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Yeah, the Lord loves joy. He loves joy. He's, he's happy. He who sits in the heavens laughs. Yeah, let, open your mouth. Let it out if he's touching you like that. That's it. There's release. There's healing. There's blessing in that. You'll laugh at the devil. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. You will laugh. Your life can be so turned around that you go, whoa, that stuff, it's like a distant memory now. When the Lord turned around all of that bad stuff into making you a new person. You know, have you received Christ? As your personal saviour, you've publicly acknowledged him. You don't know? You want to do it right now? Just repeat this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus. I thank you that you died on the cross for me. I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead. And I confess you as my Lord and saviour right now. I am saved. I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Amen. I tell you right now. <laughs> Stretch out your hands, church. You know, it's not just one person. The Holy Ghost is doing a work here. This is so wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for breaking every yoke of bondage. Ignite Ministries. You know, they've been such a blessing, both to, to me personally, but I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful that we didn't get all the sound gear ruined when it rained the other night because there's, someone went to the effort of setting up a tent. We salute you, precious people. This is the body of Christ working together. You know, when Paul said and wrote in the book of Philippians, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches. All of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He was writing to, and he said, you Philippian church were the only ones who gave. You were the only ones. He didn't write that just unconditional promise to any. Just like, yeah, look. Like, a lot of believers, oh, well, well, my God, well, I don't give, but my God well, shall supply all my needs according to his glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. My God shall supply. And they recite it like a, a mantra, but they don't give. That's not biblical. We have to be in obedience with his word. We have to be those that call him Lord and do the things that he says. You cannot call him Lord and then not do the things that he says. We got to be consistent with that. You Philippians, you were the only ones. I tell you what, you you legends out there, you're the only ones. And I tell you, my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Part of the package deal. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Someone say, someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, yes, it doesn't need to be a sad time offering. It's a happy time. God loves a cheerful giver. If you'd like to give by card, you can do that at the back. See Luke. Luke's the enthusiastic young man waving over there. There he is. He's married. And then we've got um, <laughs> others. <laughs> If you want to give by cash, you can do that as well. The, the church type bags will come around. Father, thank you for everyone giving. Bless them. Let the blessing of Abraham come on them. Increase them in Jesus' mighty name. You can do that now. That will be wonderful. Seven forty-nine. I feel nearly done. Except for that beer thing. There's a few, there's a few, isn't there? There's a few. Even just by, the devil always tries to keep people constrained, not moving forward. That woman with the issue of blood, what did she go through to push through those barriers after she heard about Jesus? But the risk of being stoned went, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. It's part of love. Perfect love casts out all fear. When the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, I, I don't even believe, actually. I'm a pretty I'm pretty out there. I don't believe Stephen was concerned. You know, when Stephen was being stoned, I don't believe he was... I think he his face shone like an angel. <laughs> he's, he's praying, Lord, they're stoning him. They're stoning him to death. And he's saying, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. He's love, he loves them. He loves the people that are stoning him. He's praying for them as he's being killed, saying, Lord, don't hold this sin against them. They, they don't know what they're doing. They just don't know. They just don't get it. Just You'll still be merciful to them. He's being stoned. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then Jesus is standing in heaven, ready to receive him as the first martyr. Tell you what, we're... We're praying before about the, how did you put it? The Something about the end time martyrs you were saying. <laughs> how will we go if we, to the ones that might kill us if we won't go to our neighbour, to the stranger in Western culture Australia that might go, oh, get away from me. God bother her. <laughs> it's like, oh, you <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. It's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. Plus, you're not a God botherer. It's um you're bothering them. The message is bothering them more than you. Because you can talk to them about their dog that they're walking or the car that they're driving. They don't mind at all. They're happy to chat about that, but you bring up the name of Jesus. <sighs> Sometimes, not always. A lot of people are like, no, no one's ever told me that. Yeah. Some people are like, no one's ever told me that. Yeah. Dang, no one's ever... Oh, just, I'm getting too many gospel themes running through my heart. <laughs> just people, who's heard about that? There was someone uh, that was a Nazi... Um, Nazi, bad guys. We could... Um, and soon I'm going to invite Evangelist Yana, who has the voice of a villain. Um, because, <laughs> because there's a blend between a Russian and a German accent. And I never realised that those, are, those two are the top two voices of villains in all of um, movie making history. So, <laughs> but she's got a heart of gold and she, she loves people. She's been such a blessing to us. Even with the voice of a villain, she's still winning people to Jesus. People still receive Christ. So it's actually the message. There's power in the gospel. 
The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. Like my new friend over here. It's the power of God for all who believe. You've just come out from among them and been separate and said, yes, I'm giving my life to the Lord. There's power there. Power is available to be able to live like Jesus. From this day forth, you will live differently. You will not be the same. Because of that decision you made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> People have done terrible things because no one ever told them. Let's go tell them. Yeah. Let's go tell them. The motives, oh, well. I'm like, oh, well, they, they prayed with you, yeah, but they didn't really get saved because they were still swearing and they Oh, so you, you, you can see through to the motives of their heart immediately better than... The Bible literally says in Romans, mm. and I've never heard, I've never understood this until just this week, mm. that do not say, do not say... How does it go, Romans 10? Do not say in your heart who shall ascend into heaven, for that is to bring Christ. Do not say in your heart who shall ascend into heaven, for that is to bring Christ down. Have we been judging people's salvation based on where they're at right now? Yeah. They just pray. It's the seed of God's word. Would you give the baby half a second before it's completely transformed into the perfect image of who you believe Christ is? Yeah. yeah. I think we could do that. I think we should feed, you know, babies need milk. Babies will cry in the night. That's okay, they're babies. They need milk. They need milk to grow up. Then they'll get on the meat later. Bring them along. Bring them along. We have... This is night eight. We have two nights left. Saturday night, Sunday night. I encourage you, cross the street. Knock on your neighbor's door. Get them in here. It could make all the difference. It could make the difference between their life, their eternity... The things that they were potentially going to do, they won't do. We begin to turn this whole place around. Because I'm not okay with Toowoomba going down the toilet. I'm not okay with Wilsonton going to hell. We're going to do everything within our power to change the things that have been happening here. That is the will of the devil. We want the will of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We want God's will done for mankind here. In Wilsonton, in Jesus' mighty name. If the spirit of fear has been holding you back, if you've had fear and it's breaking off of your life, we're going to stand up right now. We're going to worship. I want those of you that you have been held back, no more. Come to the front, worship Him. We're going to believe the Lord. Soul winning tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Come and, come and be trained. Come and be trained. It's easy. You just read. So if you know how to read, you can lead someone to Christ. Yeah. You read this paper because there's power in the gospel. Oh, well, it's not my personality. There's power in the gospel, not in your personality. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you have a wonderful personality. Yeah. <laughs> but there's power in the gospel. There's power in his word. He watches over his word to perform it. He watches over his word to perform it, not your personality. So whatever kind of personality you are, come at 9 a.m. tomorrow uh, morning. And then Sunday, 10 a.m. at Blake Street, 15 Blake Street. We'd love to see you there. That's 10 a.m. And then Sunday night, back here, 6 p.m. We'd love to see you there. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand to your feet right now? Evangelist Siona, do you want to come and bless the people? Anything? I'm going to do this if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I've been blowing my voice out so it's extra raspy today. Uh, maybe I'll need to talk to you about some voice training because I've been not preaching from my diaphragm, but with all my heart you know, and all my throat, apparently. But, you know, I, I really want to emphasize tomorrow there's nothing you can take with you to heaven except souls. Nothing. We can't take money. We can't take our success. We can't take anything that we do in this world to have and accept people. And there's people in your life. Only you can reach them. 
nobody else, no pastor, no evangelist, only you. There will be people that will only cross your path and maybe only one time. And we all have to know how to use that moment that we have to preach the simple gospel. And I remember not knowing how to do it. Yeah. I remember going through life as a Christian, knowing how good Jesus is, but never telling, or I'm, I was telling, but I never knew how to actually give them Jesus. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knew I was a Christian, you know? Everybody talking to me about it, but I had no clue how to actually bring them into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And even if I brought yes. them to my church, there was no altar calls at my church. They didn't even lead people to Jesus inside the church. I was going for months to church and I was not even saved. And I knew because I was in a kids meeting and they said, if you never ask Jesus to come and live on the inside of you and be your Lord and Savior, you, you can do that right now. And I knew I'd never done that. I believed in him. I memorized Bible scripture in Sunday school. Right. But I never actually gave him my life. And that's very simple to do. It's not complicated, you know? Yeah, there are many other things, baptism, going to church, all of that. Baptism in the Holy Ghost, sure. But when you call on the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. Yes. It is that simple. Yes. And whatever is holding you back from doing it, I promise you right now, it's not from God. It is never from God if somebody says, oh, that's not for me. So winning is not for me is a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. I tell you that today, not because that's something I do and I train people to do and I just want people to come. No, because of, again, the truth that the only thing we can take with us is people yes. to heaven. Yeah. And if you do that with strangers and you can walk up to random strangers and just tell them about Jesus, you will have more boldness going to your own family, your own loved ones, you know, and God will use you to sow that seed. And even if, you know, many times your own family, because they know you, they don't want to receive from you. And I'm not going to take very long. But the Bible says if you're faithful with someone else's, God will give you your own. And the Bible says when you reap, whatsoever you reap, you will, you will sow. Whatsoever you sow, you will reap. I mean. And it also says when you sow into the Spirit, you will reap from the Spirit life everlasting. When you go up to somebody and you tell them about Jesus and you say, pray this after me, say this out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, and they pray after you. In that moment, Jesus comes into their heart. Yeah. Because he wants in. He's not standing there. Okay, do you really mean it? You have to really prove to me that you mean it. Then I will come into your heart. No. The moment they say his name, they crack the door open, and Jesus will go in there. Oh, he will. He will bust. The, he's not shy. You didn't know. Jesus is not shy. The moment they say his name, the Bible says you cannot even say Lord Jesus unless you're under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Wow. And when you sow that seed, you just sowed Jesus into somebody. You sowed salvation. Yeah. Guess what you're going to reap? Salvation. You let someone else's brother to the Lord, someone else's mother, someone else's sister, someone else's uncle or granny. And God will give you your brother, your mother, your sister, your husband, your yes. wife. Yeah. But people yes. pray for people's salvation, but they never put a seed in the ground. Right. Wow. You cannot pray for a harvest. Mm. Souls coming into the kingdom, the Bible calls it the harvest. Pray yeah. for laborers because the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. Yes. That's talking about people, yes. the harvest of souls. Yeah. We cannot pray for a harvest of souls without putting seed in the ground. It's against the principle. You have to put seed in the ground. You have to lead someone else to the Lord. And then you can put pressure on that seed and say, God... I'm obedient to your word. I'm sowing salvation. I'm going to reap my family. My brother is coming back. My mother is coming. My dad is coming. My husband is coming. My kids are coming into the kingdom. And I challenge you, do not allow any devil in hell because it's only the devil that doesn't want you to come soul winning. Nobody else. Only the enemy. Do whatever it takes to come tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. And I promise you this because I've done this for 16 years. It's so simple to do it. The way we train you to do it, there is no way if you follow the gospel summoning script and talk with multiple people that not one of them will be saved. It just has never happened. No. In 16 years, I can tell you, if somebody is following the method, mes method, they are always leading people to the Lord. Amen. Always. Every single time. Amen. In every nation. I've been over 30 nations. This is number 35 for me. And we've been doing it and people have been receiving Jesus. Yeah. And Australians are pretty nice, so 
no no reason to be nervous or scared Amen. to go out. Fear is the spirit from hell. Yeah. Go against that. Don't allow that to bind you Amen. and keep you from doing the work of God. There's nothing like looking into someone's face when they say, Dear Lord Jesus, and they come from death into yes. life. Yeah. From darkness into light. Yeah. I want every single one of you to experience that. How many of you are going to come tomorrow? 9 a.m. Just wave your hand at me. Wave your hand at me. I'm going to look at your faces now. I'm going to look at you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> not we know where liars go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for every single person in this tent. I thank you, Lord, even as we worship you right now, that the power of God will come on them, that the Holy Ghost will come and stir in their heart, that their heart will be broken for souls again, more than ever before that they will not be able to shut their mouth about Jesus any longer. They will not be quiet. It will be hard for them to not win souls. It will be hard for them not to lay hands on the sick. It will be hard for them to live a normal life. But now they will live a supernatural life. And Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. For we know it is your work. It is not our work. But it's your Holy Spirit in us that is going to do great things. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Split this sea so I could walk right through. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I will stay there seen. I am a child of God. Split this sea. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. Oh, you rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God.